secret heroes. What are you proud of but can't tell anyone who knows you? When I was 15, I would browse Omegle because I was a randy little fricker. One day, I met a girl who was my age. We talked for a while, we roleplayed, and then we traded <clears throat> images. We'd then spent the next few days talking and occasionally doing other stuff together as well. After we'd been talking for four months, we thought we loved each other. We always had each other's backs and we always talked and helped each other. We wanted nothing more than to meet up and all that jazz. Eventually, we cooled off talking for a bit. Then about two months later, she started to tell me about her mental illness. She talked about how she wasn't feeling herself, how she was feeling lost and depressed all the time. Then one day in January of my sophomore year, she texted me during school. It was something along the lines of, I want you to know that no matter what happens, I love you and I want to thank you for being a big part of my life. I left health class and immediately went to the bathroom and began telling her that she was loved and she couldn't go like this. Thank God for the hours of browsing memes on Imgur at the time because I remembered they said, don't try to help, best thing to do is call a professional. This will only make this longer, but this advice saved her life. My brother had had to do the same thing with a friend he knew in real life, and he said that he was hesitant to call 911 as it felt like he was betraying his friend. His English teacher had told his class that calling 911 will be hard to do and it'll feel like betrayal, but it has to be done. I remembered my brother telling me that, so I acted. I just called 911 and told them my friend was about to try to self-delete and told them the town she lived in. They directed me to the police department of where she lived, and I talked to them and told them her name and that she was in high school. I came out of the bathroom and went back to my health class after an hour of calling the police and trying to keep her in contact with me. When I got back, I was directed by my health teacher to the counselor because I was crying. The counselor called her school and told them what was going on and asked to be updated. About a week later, she texted me telling me she was doing okay. They took her to the hospital and gave her medicine and a shrink. She said she was upset with me initially, but ultimately glad. And her parents said they were eternally grateful. A month later, she said she was feeling a lot better. It's now almost two years. We don't talk too much, but when we Snapchat, she always tells me she's doing great. She recently posted that she's finally finished her sessions for therapy. That's my story. I'll never tell those I know because I don't want to tell people I used to go on Omegle until 3am looking for girls. Only me, my counsellor, and she know what happened, and truly only the two of us know all the details. I hope this helps someone who finds themselves in this situation. Really sorry for the long, long story. In short, I saved a girl I knew through Omegle from finishing things by calling 911. If you are ever in that situation, you'll almost certainly worry about calling them because it'll seem like betrayal, or you think you can just talk them down yourself, maybe. Please, call 911. Do it. It works. Thank you for that, and for what you did for that girl. I'm honestly thrilled that a randy teen finding people to tickle their pickle to resulted in a life saved. I wonder what other unexpected capeless heroes we'll meet in our time here. I don't tell people I know that I wipe my grandma's butt for her. I take care of her full time, and I'm really proud of myself for keeping her clean, happy, and as healthy as she can be. Part of that entails showering her and, of course, helping her in the bathroom. It's weird to talk about with friends, since nobody really wants to hear about that, obviously, but I feel proud of myself for helping her in her time of need. It gives me a weird sense of comfort knowing that my grandma doesn't have a dirty butt. <laughs> I walked in June 2013 for my bachelor's graduation. I was just two units shy of actually obtaining the degree. I told all of my family and friends that I'd graduated. Right at that time, my mum got sick and I moved her out to me and took care of her the last two years of her life. I never went back to finish those two units. I enrolled this past September and just completed all the coursework for my degree. I now just have to submit my graduation application and I'll have that piece of paper. I'm 33 and I've been working towards it for 10 years now. I'm 51 and my husband and I are having great times in the bedroom, maybe the best in our marriage. Most of my friends have stopped themselves or their partner has stopped. I can't fathom it. We work at it, and it's like going out to play tennis or something. And yeah, no one wants to hear this. Just use it or lose it, folks. I know that this is a small thing, but I haven't smoked in two days, which is not bad considering I was at a pack and a half a day for 15 years. Oh wow, this is getting a lot more attention than I expected. 
Thank you so much for the kind words, guys. Yes, I'm vaping. It's zero milligram juice, but it's really helping with the oral fixation. Also, using Champix and the Vivid Dreams are freaking awesome FYI for anyone considering it. Haven't had any of the adverse effects from it, but we're only on our third week of the pills and just hit the cold turkey of nicotine point a few days ago. My girlfriend is doing it as well. I overcame a smack addiction and have been clean for nine years. Today marks the first day on my road of recovery. It's my first 24 hours with no alcohol and I can't even remember how long. <laughs> Very few people know the extent of my drinking, so while I'd love to share it with everyone because I'm extremely proud, I can't really tell anyone close to me. I ran for 30 minutes on a treadmill yesterday. I can't run on asphalt because my joints are cramp. I can't tell anyone because it's not really a monumental achievement, but I'm proud. Beating anorexia and gaining weight recently. I'm so proud of myself, but I can't tell others because they didn't know I had anorexia. It was my battle, and I won. P.S. Thank you for the support and your kind messages. I have to point out that the reason why others didn't really think I had any food disorder is because 1. I had to travel abroad and met new people while I'm already skinny. I was doing great until about 8 years ago where I got cancer in my chest. The trauma and going through the surgery and all, losing my weight and hair affected my body image deeply. Over the years, people got used to the new skinny me. I struggled hard, I needed support, but I chose to do this alone because there's a feeling of guilt and shame that goes with it, and I thought it was none of anyone's business. It was personal. I played Neopets for way too long, and I eventually traded my way to a UC Grey Cougra with an RN I created during a purge a few years ago. I was so happy that I was crying, similar to what I was doing when I managed to create some epic purge names, and my roommate asked if I was okay. I couldn't manage to tell her why I was so happy. Mine is small in the grand scheme of things, and even in the small scheme of things it's not big either. I've told people of the event, but not why I was proud of myself for it, because I found it kind of embarrassing. Years ago, I was walking home from my university at about 11 at night listening to music, and I thought I heard a noise in the massive park beside me during a lull in the song. When I turned off my music, I could hear crying and muffled screams. Now, I've always thought I'd help someone in need, but was never sure if it was all talk and I was just a coward at heart, as I've always doubted myself. Well, once my mind took its time to understand the implications, I vaulted the fence and just beelined for the noise. When she came into view, I saw a figure behind her. I hit it with such force I tore through a massive bunch of shrubs and uprooted them. Turns out it was just a jacket that had got stuck, but <laughs> I got up, helped her up and recovered her jacket. Turned out she'd gotten into an argument with someone, run away from them, and had got lost and fallen. So overall, nothing as serious as what my mind thought at the time. I walked her to an address she gave me, contacted the police, and went home. It's a small thing, but it let me know I'll run to a person's aid. I'm not a completely horrible person. That is great. So many of us who imagine ourselves as the hero in any given theoretical crisis will freeze up or get cold feet, look down, and walk away when this sort of thing happens. So well done to you for acting on your instincts that way. Slight exception, since a few people close to me know this story, but it's not exactly something you share at the dinner table. I guess I'm proud that I was able to help this woman find some peace about the situation, though. See, I found her following her on Tumblr, writing a self-deletion note. After a short moral dilemma, I attempted to dox her to her mother, but she didn't respond. Long story short, some other followers managed to get the police involved, but she assured everyone that she was just venting and being dramatic online, and the matter was dropped. She ended things the next day. I sent flowers to the funeral, very far away, with an anonymous note. Months later, her mother responded to my attempted dox and ended up asking me a lot of questions about this girl, with whom I'd only had small online interactions with. Why did she do this, and did people encourage her, were the questions at the forefront. And I spent two hours at work messaging back and forth with her, telling her all I knew. At the end, she thanked me and wrote that she would never wish this on anyone, and begged anyone considering not being alive anymore to reconsider. So I double down on her request now. Don't let an internet stranger explain to your family why you're gone. I posted this here not for karmic rewards but because I've had people far closer to me self-delete as well. And I wanted to remind everyone that people will miss you in ways you can't even begin to know. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. 
The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I'm learning to become a great advocate for my kids' medical and educational needs. It seems like it should be easy as a parent sticking up for your kids, but in reality, when someone with authority says, I know what's best, they're fine, or they're getting the best we have, it's hard to say you're wrong. My daughter suffered with terrible, terrible eczema for almost two years because her first pediatrician kept telling us it was normal for babies to have it. We were on Medicaid, it was our first kid, and we didn't know how to argue. Turns out she was allergic to a litany of foods. Easy fix once we knew. Now she has behavioral issues in school. If we, but especially myself, hadn't learned to be strong, she never would have gotten the wonderful IEP and specialist team she has now, which has made a world of difference. When my son wasn't talking at 18 months and everyone said, it's fine, it's normal, I made a fuss, uncomfortable as it was, and it turned out he wasn't hearing squat because he needed tubes. Now he's two and a half and speaking full sentences daily. I grew up watching authority figures walk all over my mum. I let it happen to me most of my life. I'm really proud to be improving on that, especially for my kids. That I've managed to keep my job despite having no idea what I'm doing. Everyone just assumes that I must be really good at it, because when they ask how it's going, I always just say, it's fine, everything's good, when in reality, I'm surprised I haven't been fired yet. I'm in the same boat, but I've admitted to the people around me. People have suggested that I find another job, something with more future, something that pays better, even though my current job has a reasonable future and decent pay. They don't know that if I were to do this job at any other place, I'd be laughed out the door for incompetence. My current job has everything set up in a way that a monkey could do it, and I have no training or useful skill set at all, nor experience with doing my job in a normal way. But everyone thinks it's complicated and high-tech. I hope they don't notice for quite a while. I'm a 31-year-old straight male, and I can deep-throat the frick out of a banana. Like a whole banana. I'd like to brag, but nah. Today I had the old double stream pee and I didn't get a single drop outside the toilet bowl. I went to an Overeaters Anonymous meeting last night, my first one actually. I was out for a drive trying to keep myself from binging when it occurred to me to see if there was a meeting that I could attend. I pulled over, looked it up and there was one about 20 miles away. I'd be 10 minutes late but I decided to go anyway. I got there only 5 minutes late but stood around the corner from the meeting room for 15 minutes before I got the courage to walk in. I sat on a couch next to a gentleman old enough to be my grandfather and I was the youngest one in there by a couple of decades. I didn't speak except to say my name when the leader asked and I kept welling up with tears and breaking down. I think it was so overwhelming just to be there, to have taken the first step, and it was unbelievable to me to hear stories of others who have a similar relationship with food. I've applied to the police academy of my nearby big city and have already passed the written test and the oral interview. I didn't think it was likely that I'd pass either one, especially the oral interview, but I did, and I'm scheduled to take the physical test in less than three months, and I want so badly to be in law enforcement. My eating habits are keeping me from my dream. So I went to my first OA meeting last night and it was harder than walking into that written test or the oral interview. Much scarier. But I freaking did it. I'm so happy that I did. Well done to you on both passing your tests and for taking the first step on what's no doubt a really intimidating obstacle. It's so damn brave to confront what we like least about ourselves and listen to others vocalize the things that we are sometimes too afraid to look at. With that level of courage, you meet at least one more of the criteria for being a good cop. I've been in a really bad place since I moved to grad school. My ex-boyfriend broke up with me just before I moved here, and I haven't really had a high self-worth since. So I've been crying a lot and have had some low-key thoughts about going away forever. A few of my friends know and they're here for me, but my family has no idea that I'm not completely happy. Anyway, I made an appointment to meet with a therapist. I'm finally trying to get help, and I'm really proud of myself for that. I have a complete collection of Lord of the Rings and Hobbit Lego minifigures. My Marvel Lego collection is nearly complete, save for a couple of minifigures that I just don't like, and my Star Wars collection is complete for the last five or six years. The only people that know this are my wife, kids, and brother. I have not and will not at any point inform my wife how much the collections are worth. What's the old saying? My greatest fear is that I die and my wife sells my collection for what I told her I paid for it.
I'm really proud that I keep going, that I keep finding small, insignificant reasons to keep pushing through. I think things like, who would feed the dog? No one can cover my shift this weekend. My gaming buddy would never know what happened to me. It's too close to the holidays, I would ruin it for everyone. My best friend is really up on her luck lately and I can't tear her down. And it's hard. Every day feels worse and nothing is working. Everything keeps falling apart and everyone expects me to be this happy-go-lucky person. And how do you explain to them that you can't anymore? I feel like the biggest burden, but I'm proud that even through everything, I can still have hope that it will get better. I can at least be proud of that. I'm truly touched and I would like to express my gratitude. I am grateful for you and all the others who've reached out to me both publicly and privately and just in thought. It's difficult to share these demons in real life, but knowing all of you exist out there, cheering on for a complete stranger, makes up for all the times I wanted to say something but couldn't. I've been moved to tears countless times today with all of your wonderful stories. So thank you all for your hearts, your positivity, and your help. I have several new reasons to get me through the day. All my love. This will probably get buried, but anyways, I'm not particularly good with girls, and I've moved to a new city earlier this year where my friend introduced me to a girl. We hit it off and started dating. Well, due to my aforementioned lack of skills with girls, combined with going to a military academy and then a job that traveled all the time, it had been around seven years since I'd had a relationship. A few flings here and there, but no relationships, and to be honest, I started to feel like I was never going to meet anyone and end up alone. I was and am terrified of being that weird uncle to all my friend's kids that dies alone. Well, the relationship just didn't work. We had fundamental incompatibilities and I wasn't happy. She, on the other hand, was completely into me and probably would have married me after dating for only a few months after I'd asked. I ended the relationship. I'm really proud of myself for refusing to settle for a crappy relationship, despite wanting someone in my life being one of my biggest desires right now. It wouldn't have been fair to myself, and more importantly, it wouldn't have been fair to her simply to stay in the relationship waiting for something better to come along. I have exercised 3,450 days in a row without skipping. I'm 62 years old and I walk 3 or 4 miles a day or work with my trainer or lift weights. I love to be active and I think it keeps me healthy. That I keep a lot of other people's secrets and I don't say crap. I'd rather those people handle their business than come to me about it, but I guess they know I can be trusted. My girlfriend and I finished at the same time the other night. I don't feel like anyone I know is interested, but I'm pretty excited about it. That's amazing. I could never imagine that happening with me and my girlfriend. I eat so much faster than her. By the time I'm finished, she's usually about halfway through her meal. Well, I just spat coffee onto my own lap reading that follow-on comment, so well done to both of you. I reward you your respective invisible capes for bedroom compatibility and contributions to comedy. I have a patient who herniated a disc in his back and is a blacksmith. He has insurance, so I have to take it, but he has a copay and his wife works, but they now have debt from a failed surgery for his condition. He couldn't afford the copay, so I went to the gallery where he makes wrought iron art and bought it all so he can afford his copay and keep his house. I'm sure you're all thinking, why not do it pro bono? The insurance world in my state doesn't look kindly on charging copays or denying someone insurance benefits when they pay it. I couldn't find any other way to help this guy without it being enticement to come in for treatment, and it was more to keep the stress off a house payment during the Christmas season. So I paid more for his art than his insurance will ever pay me in hopes that he can keep his house and continue treatment. Either way, I did a good deed, but I can't even tell my wife because I'm not sure she'll be impressed by the sheer amount of money I spent on wrought iron candle holders and lamps that are hidden away in my office. A few things. I really enjoy helping people with computer stuff online. I'm a regular on a certain sub-reddit's daily questions thread and proud of being able to help. Can't tell anyone in real life because I'd become their go-to tech support and frankly, they don't treat me as well as the internet strangers that I help. I also started doing video game streaming earlier this year. I only really stream one game per day, anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, typically. I started a YouTube channel to back up all of my streams, Twitch exports, yay! And I have next to no followers or subscribers. I forget about followers, I have four subs on YouTube, one of which is my brother. So there's no reason to be proud there. The real reason I'm so proud of myself is for sticking to it despite my horrible stage fright. Being in front of that camera every day is terrifying. The possibility that any number of people could see me do something stupid or make a mistake is terrifying, but that's really why I do it. 
Not just to see if it's fun, like I told everyone. I wanted to force myself to face my fears every day and I've done it. And I'm still doing it. See you tonight, Twitch. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.